Hello, our presentation was on cold packs. My name is Kyla Shera. I'm Gracie McLeod. I'm Grace Anglum. So for the introduction, this study was conducted in China and compared the use of pressurized salt ice packs with water ice packs after total knee arthroplasty with 69 clients for pain management and swelling reduction. This study was a randomized control trial with level 2 evidence. The study had both a control and experimental group, but it had less than 100 participants. The focus question of the study was pressurized salt ice packs are an effective modality compared to water ice packs to relieve pain and decrease swelling in patients following a total knee arthroplasty. The inclusion criteria was that participants had to be between the ages of 42 and 81 years old. They had to have stable blood pressure. They had to have a total knee arthroplasty due to severe osteoarthritis. Patients were excluded if they had the valgus or varus deformity, rheumatoid, ar rheumatoid arthritis, peripheral vascular disease, Raynaud's phenomenon, cold uticaria, hypertension, and or diabetes. In the intervention of this study, cold pack, whether it was water or salt, was applied within six hours after the total knee arthroplasty and three days following. There were four outcomes measured in the study. The first one was knee pain scores with the visual analog scale, which was subjective. The second was swelling that was five centimeters above and five centimeters below the patella, which was objective. The third outcome was the slipping times of the ice pack, which was objective. And the fourth outcome was wound dressing or the bed unit moist situation, which was objective. There were two statistical tests used um, in this study. One was a t-test, which um, looked at the pain score as well as the swelling and girth measurements. Um, the chi-square test was also used um, to look at the slipping time and the time between wound dressings. Um, overall, the results um, were statistically significant. Um, pain scores um, at 12 hours, 24, 48, and 72 hours were all statistically significant. Girth measurements were as well at 12 hours, 24 hours, and 72 hours. Slipping time and the time between wound dressings were also statistically significant um, with a p-value of less than 0.05. In conclusion, the research shows that the use of pressurized salt ice packs after total knee arthroplasty can result in better pain management and swelling reduction than the traditional water ice packs. This can be applied for use in therapy, however, further research is needed. The strengths of this study include pressurized salt ice packs are a safe, inexpensive, and simple form of treatment. Each patient was informed about their disease, preoperative, and postoperative matters, as well as the reasoning for the ice packs. Strong outcome measures were used, and all of the measures were re valid and reliable clear inclusion and exclusion criteria was included in the study, and no dropouts were reported. The limitations of the study are that the study is subjective because each participant can tolerate different amounts of pain. The pressure given to the ice pack when applying it to each patient was not universal. The sample size was too small and had an unequal amount of males versus females. The sample size was 69 total subjects, so that was under 100 subjects. The effects that cryotherapy had on each patient could have been influenced by the dressing types. Clinical implications of this study are that the results of this study indicate that pressurized salt ice packs are more effective in reducing pain and swelling than water ice packs. This is because water ice packs slip more. The composition is water and ice and there's an increased temperature of the water ice packs. Occupational therapists are always looking for new and creative ways to make their patient comfortable. So by decreasing the amount of slippage and the times of the wound or bed unit moist when using the pressurized salt ice packs will make this a simpler method to use in the hospital setting. Therefore, occupational therapists can take this into consideration when treating a client for pain and swelling in order to see the most effective outcome.